The second one of these uh, five C's uh, is called conformity. Now, the, I got this idea about conformity when I watched this theoretical um, video on YouTube about this concept that was developed by uh, a researcher back in the 50s called Ash. Now, what he did was that he put 10 people in one row in a room and then he made them watch a uh, three different uh, lines on a, on a screen and then one line next to them. Now, what he had done is that he had prepped the first nine people in the room to say the wrong line, right? So as you can see on this sketch, they, every line corresponds with one letter. So let's say A was the right one. Then he prepped nine out of 10 to say C instead. Now. What happened was they went C, 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 and it came down to the 10th person to respond. What happened was that in a very large percentage of, um, of the cases, that person said, gave the wrong answer as well. In the beginning, people thought that this was due to peer pressure, that people felt socially obligated to actually also say the wrong thing. Now, as the years passed by and researchers were, were, were able to put these MRI thingies and you know, look inside our brain and see what, what parts of our brain were activated, it was actually not our you know, creative, imaginary, social sides of, of our brain that got activated, but it was actually our rational brain that got activated. And so they ran several of these kinds of tests to see if people actually believed that a wrong answer, an obviously wrong answer, could be right rationally. And so conformity builds on the idea that we want to belong in a group and we want to relate in a group, not from a sort of social perspective, but from a rational perspective. And whenever we can make someone believe that they have some rationale behind their decision, we can make them do the most stupid things. Yeah, that's right. That was a stupid thing. So, um, let me exemplify conformity a little bit. This is like, you know, um, all these personality tests that people do. A couple of months back, I see my brother post a clip or a link onto Facebook where it says that he is Hermione Granger in Harry Potter. Now, there is absolutely no functional need for him to know that he is Hermione Granger in Harry Potter. Right? Because he's not applying for her, you know, position. He's not interested in going into acting, you know. So there's no functional need for him to know who he is in Harry Potter. And I see this being posted. For me, there is absolutely no functional need to know who I am in Harry Potter. However, since I know that my brother is Hermione Granger in Harry Potter, I have strong social and emotional needs to understand who I am in relation to him. So I click the link, I click the test, I give them all of my data from Facebook, I don't even know who they are who created this test, and I get back the result that I am Professor Snape. Right? So naturally, I take that link, I post it as a comment in my brother's um, uh, original post and I go ha ha I'm Professor Snape uh, you're Hermione Granger ha ha I am and he's like oh you're evil and I'm like yeah but you're like a book smart blah, 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 blah. we start discussing our third brother jumps into the discussion he does the test and naturally he becomes Harry Potter you know the superstar you know so he posts that back and we start discussing meanwhile we do this what we're actually doing is something like that most people would describe as a waste of time but what we're actually doing is that we are relating to each other, finding suitable ways to be able to discuss each other's character traits without it being so dramatic. I mean, the corresponding thing would be that we would book dinner with each other and then we would have a, a, you know, a serious feedback session. But, you know, this is much more fun and it gives us the same ability to relate to each other. Now, you might think that that is uh, um, a silly case, but I mean, we see like millions and millions and millions of people behaving like this. The most ridiculous one I've ever seen is the application that was called What's My Stripper Name? The only time in the world where there is a functional need for me to have a stripper name is 
if I am a stripper without a name, right? So that's the thing. You, you, you need these kind of apps. You need this kind of content in order to be able to relate to other people. And in case of the, the stripper name, people just did it like 3 million in a day, just did it to be able to say that, oh, you got that name, I got this name. It was a reason to contact others. And so it inhabited this natural vi viral vibe where we had to talk to each other as we got our results. So conformity is about giving people a reason to relate to others. You got IQ tests, you got all of these things. And I think the most misunderstood concept of all internet concepts that builds on conformity is the hashtag. And the reason why it's misunderstood is because brands always want to use a hashtag in order to say, you know, Coca-Cola Summer Party 2016. The reason for that is not that they, you know, want to signal something, but the reason for that is that they should measure it afterwards and they want to see the effect of the campaign. Now, measuring systems are catching up, so you don't have to do that crap anymore. Because what you first have to do, you have to understand that you have to teach people what that hashtag means before you use it. Otherwise, no one will, you know, because if I will use something, my anxiety levels will go through the roof. Like, what does it mean to use this Coca-Cola Summer Party 2016 hashtag? It means nothing, right? So you have to load that with value so that I can use it and say something about myself to other people and they can relate to me as a result. So the way we use hashtags, and you can watch this on Twitter or on Instagram, the way people use hashtag these days is Monday morning on the bus, hashtag lonely, hashtag sad. And why you use hashtag lonely, hashtag sad? It's not because you want to, you know, connect with the, the, the click of lonely people, but why you, you use it is because you want your friends to get in touch with you, asking you, oh, what's wrong? You don't want them to go like, ah, -ha, you're on the bus, I'm in my car, I'm having my AC and my favorite music on, and you're around a lot of bacteria thinking people, right? So this all builds into the idea of conformity. We give people assets so that they can relate to each other uh, in a much easier way than, than they could otherwise. That's conformity and it inhabits huge viral power when you figure out how to actually use it. So conformity, the second C of the five C's.